So today I'm gonna answer the age old question, are thrift stores still worth your time? Hey, what's up, I'm Jason, and this channel is for music lovers who wanna discover something new to listen to, purchase, or avoid. I focus on vinyl, but of course, everyone is welcome. Let's jump right into this. So I have a love-hate relationship with thrift stores. Uh, my dad would drag me to thrift stores when I was a little kid, usually hunting for records and books, and I have spent more time in thrift stores than I really want to admit, but to be honest, I've been avoiding thrift stores like the plague for the last few years, and occasionally during that time, I would pop into a thrift store only to be disappointed. Uh, it just started to feel like a complete waste of time. Why the hell am I gonna put my hands on a bunch of dirty old junk, waste an hour of my life just to come away empty handed? Well, I'm gonna show you why. So just to set the stage a little bit, last weekend was my birthday weekend and we went up to Seattle for a couple of days and on the way out of town, we're passing a goodwill. And I don't know, just something told me to poke my head in there and see if there was anything in there. Uh, and to be honest, I mean, I was kind of looking for stereo equipment just to see if there was some new hi-fi gear in there. And I, I'm not even sure why we stopped. It was just because it was my birthday, I think my girlfriend was just like, okay, yeah, let's go in there. And I'm like, ah, man, this is the store that did me wrong once. Uh, about four or five years ago, I was in this very thrift store hunting for records and they have this nice little section. They probably have over a thousand records at all times. And I mean, and I don't think I've ever found anything there, but this one time uh, they sort of got my hopes up because I'm, st I'm standing there flipping through records with about, you know, four other people. And I start seeing some nice stuff. I start seeing some 60s and 70s. I start seeing Hendrix and Pink Floyd and Grateful Dead and The Doors and all this stuff. And I start just pulling these things out and I'm looking around and everyone's just ignoring me looking around and I'm so, okay. So I just start grabbing these and I probably got through about 15, 20 albums that I had this stack and I go scurry over to the corner and I start pulling them out and these things were destroyed. I mean, they were just carved with a knife. I mean, they were in bad shape and so man it just to add insult to injury you know after being in there for you know half an hour hunting for that stuff and thinking that i found something it was like ah oh, man so i kind of swore off this thrift store for a while anyway we're passing by this very store i go in and as i walk in i, I pass the the vinyl record section and there's someone you know kind of flipping through records i'm like and eh, it's not you know it's it's too the store's been open a couple hours. Like, well, if there was anything, which I'm sure there's not, it's already gone. So I walked to the back where the uh, stereo equipment equipment is, and there was nothing. And so I'm just gonna leave, you know. And so I, you know, I walk out. As I'm walking out, no one's at the records, and I look over, and the first thing I see sticking right out of the front is this. This is uh, Jerry Garcia's debut solo album self-titled but also known as the wheel and it's just sticking out there and so i pull it out and i look at it, i'm like oh my god this thing's clean i take the record out turns out it's the um 1989 german white vinyl pressing in like mint condition as far as i can tell and it's hard to tell looking at this white vinyl but then when i got home and cleaned it up and listened to it like i mean it sounds like the day it was pressed and so anyway i pull this thing out, i'm like holy cow yeah, thank you. I'll take this. And by the way, all the records are $3 a piece and something. Yeah, okay. I'll take that three bucks. Hell yeah. You know, God knows I spend enough money on retail for records that it is always nice to get a little, you know, find a little deal here and there. So as I take this out and I look it over and I look back down and there are, there's another record there that I'm like, okay, I'll take that too. So anyway, this is the beginning of going through all these records, pulling out about, I think I pulled out about 34 records and, uh, and they were three bucks a piece. And so for a hundred, a little over a hundred dollars, I walked away with about 34 records. So, so let me show you those records now. And, uh, we got to get through this. I've already wasted enough of your time. It's going to take a long time to show you 34 records. So let's jam through these. All right. So there was more Grateful Dead in there. Grateful Dead related records. This is one. And this is actually was my copy. I put I put the copy that I actually found in the thrift store 
in my collection already because it was so much cleaner than the one I had, which is this one. You know, it has the, the cut corner and everything. And actually, this was not that clean. The one I found was totally clean. So anyway, boom, blues for Allah. And then I found two copies of this, Go to Heaven, Grateful Dead, underrated album. Rod the Happy Hippie knows what I'm talking about. This is an underrated album. They had two, and they were actually different pressings, as you can see the different label there. So that was cool. I'll take these all day long. Now, this is probably the one that was in the worst condition. And this is Dave Brubeck, live at Newport. And yeah, it, it doesn't sound great. It's been cleaned up and, you know, dropped the needle on it. And eh, it's noisy. It's a noisy record, but you know, three bucks it's an old six eye and it's it's seen it's it's seen a lot of play time so eh whatever this probably again this is probably the worst one this is probably like a vg minus g plus everything else is probably like a vg plus for the most part all right edgar winter group they only come out at night signed by one of the gremlins that's awesome jefferson airplane bless its pointed little head Live Airplane at uh, Fillmore, cool album. Harvest, Neil Young. Now, this is kind of a quiet album, right? If you know this album. And so, yeah, there's a little bit of surface noise. This, I'd say this is probably VG at best, but I mean, still, man, three bucks with the insert and everything. I've had multiple copies of this in the past, but I did not have one at this particular point in time. So, hey, this is kind of a placeholder for me, but um, Harvest, Neil Young. This album right here, I love, man. Um, anything Michael Bloomfield did. This is Super Session, and it's just got some incredible blues guitar on it. Just some incredible blues guitar on side one. And um, again, it's not super clean. I mean, this is a, a reissue. This isn't the original 2i Columbia, but you know, again, was missing from the collection, so I'll take it. Anything Police, here is Regatta de Blanc really clean i mean these things like new very very clean inner sleeve very clean vinyl is super clean anything police so this one's cool so i saw steve winwood and i thought oh, that's a cool cover and this is a traffic album that i didn't know about it, do it doesn't say traffic anywhere on it um and i won't get into the reason why we don't have time but it has all the band members at the top there this is a ua pressing and boom nice steve winwood traffic album we got alan parsons project i robot i know some people are like very into this stuff i don't really to be honest with you i don't i've never had any alan parsons project um uh, i don't have anything against it you know i just i didn't grow up with it or anything like that so you know i'll give this a few spins i have heard it i mean it's cool i understand the concept and everything so from time to time i will probably spin this but yeah there we go on arista just nice to find a clean one and then we got this album. I mean, this is an album that, dude, when I was a kid, man, I not only was this on the radio constantly and everybody had this, even if it, whether it was on cassette, LP, whatever, I wore this sucker out and, you know, didn't currently have one. So yeah, I'm happy to find that. Got a couple of other Genesis records here. Again, I don't know much about these, but um, you know, it's cool. I'll try these out. I was, I couldn't leave them behind. I mean, these things for three bucks, you know, and they're, they're very clean, so. There's Genesis, I, I believe this is self-titled. And then there were three, the name of this title. So you guys tell me, if you guys love Genesis, let me know, are these good albums? Um, I'm happy to have them, I'll check them out. And a perennial thrift store album, How Could You Leave Behind No Jacket Required, Phil Collins. I love the couple of early solo albums that um, Phil Collins came out with back in the day, and this is one of them, so I'm happy to add this, man. The inner sleeve there. All right, the Red Rockers, looking like the uh, outsiders in this photo. <laughs> but this has a great song on it. I just love from the early 80s called China. Uh, it's so cool. And this is one that was actually on my list of wanting to grab. So it, I was surprised to see it. I don't think this is one of those albums that just, you know, shows up all the time. So that was cool. Very happy to have this one. Another song I loved growing up, Owner of a Lonely Heart from Yes. This is the 90125 album. Very cool, very clean. I'll take it all day long. Chance, you can be proud of me, man. Concert buddy, Sports by Huey Lewis in the News. Just a clean, minty copy. Everybody needs a copy of Sports in their collection. Some people need 10, I guess. Chance, I'm looking at you. 
fantastic. So glad to have this back in the collection, man. Great album. This this one for me is one of the great pickups of that day. And this is The Birds, The Notorious Bird Brothers. I love this album. Surprisingly, I did not have any birds in the current collection. Um, I mean, I've been rebuilding a collection that I sold off a few years ago. So, you know, I've been, I, there's a lot of holes in my collection right now, but you know, it's getting there and it's, it's fun to rebuild it, especially when you find stuff at affordable prices. This is one that I thought, there's no way this is going to be listenable. It was dirty, but I mean, after I washed this thing, cleaned it, did all the stuff to it, it's very clean. This is at least VG plus. And this is one of my two favorite birds albums. Maybe a little bit of a sleeper. I don't know. Notorious bird brothers. It's not one of their earliest albums, but I love this album. So stoked to have this one. So this one was a cool find because I've lately been really feeling this guy's music and it's Pat Metheny. And so I've been putting together a little Pat Metheny collection and here they had the first of the Pat Metheny group albums um, right there, clean as a whistle, very nice. And for three bucks, I mean, I was like, yes, please. I will take this all day long. So very happy to have this Pat Metheny group album and then you can't go wrong with you too here's the unforgettable fire just super clean man i love you too i love you too all the way up into like the early 90s you know college years for me and uh i just i listen to this stuff a lot so i i love all the early you too man little crosby stills and nash here um debut album very clean to be honest with you i'm not sure what pressing this is but i'm pretty sure it's an early pressing so Stoked to have this fantastic album. And then another Yes album. This is Fragile or Fragile. Um, this is a great album. I actually, I, you know, I didn't grow up with this. You know, I didn't listen to this stuff as a young person, but I have heard this album, you know, in say the last 10 years and I haven't listened to it a lot, but I, I think it's a great album. So I am, I'm definitely stoked to have this. Um, just a nice clean copy from the thrift store. Yes, Fragile. How about a little Asia? Heat of the Moment is the song that, again, I think we grew up with it in the early 80s or whenever this came out and um, around 82 or something. But this is, uh, look at that cover, man. That is so cool, dude. I mean, I just think Asia had, they nailed it with the graphic design, man. Whoever their graphic designer was, an artist was, a lot of their albums are like this, right? They got this just crazy um, paintings on here. And uh, I just love it. So here's another one like the Matheny that was actually on my want list. And this is Ronnie Law's Friends and Strangers. And this is a really cool record, man. If it didn't have so much ring wear, you could probably appreciate the art there. Um, I think there's a couple of Ronnie Law's albums that I really enjoy. And this is one of them. It's very, the first thing I would say is it's very funky. You know, it came out in 77. So yeah, I got a little bit of disco. I think they call it, um, I think they call it um, instrumental pop or something. So, which is a pretty vague descriptor, but I love this, man. It's really cool. It's uh, the slightest bit of disco going on, you know, again, funky, um, very, very synthesizer heavy, and it's very processed. Like even the guitars, you know, I, I think they're guitars. They might be uh, synthesizers, but they're extremely processed and but it to very cool effect. So if you like this kind of jazzy, funky, futuristic kind of hybrid music, man, you could do a lot worse than Ronnie Laws. Very cool record. I'm very stoked to see this sitting there in the thrift store, man. It was on my want list. Three bucks. I'll take it. So if you've seen one of my other videos where I'm actually giving away one of these, um, stay, stay till the end of this video, actually, and I'll link to the, um, the giveaway that I have going on. I'm giving away a Japanese pressing of uh, Led Zeppelin 4 with Obi Strip. And, uh, but I was a little sad to be giving it away because my copy of Led Zeppelin 4 was pretty scratched up. This one is great and it's got the inner sleeve and everything and it's very clean. It does have $3 on here. Thanks for writing the price on the front of the album cover, but you know, whatever, man. I can swap out covers or whatever, but hey, I'm happy to have this. I mean, Led Zeppelin 4, you know it, you love it. If you want to try to win one, stay till the end and click on the video that shows up. Another perennial classic, just a very nice, and I don't even know if you can see that, but this is The Wall. This one doesn't have any um, text on it. Doesn't say The Wall on there, so all you got is the bricks. But you got that both inner sleeves are here. It's very clean. I don't know what pressing this is. Um, 
If you guys are Pink Floyd lovers and you guys have a copy of the wall that looks like this, let me know. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's an earlier pressing, but I don't know for sure. I haven't really looked these up yet, so you guys let me know. Again, there's the inner sleeve. I know I'm not showing you the matrix numbers, but I don't know. Maybe you can kind of surmise something from looking at this because all these albums are basically from the time except for <laughs> the Garcia album I shouldn't say that so I don't know maybe it is a reissue it doesn't seem like it it's got some a little tiny bit of ring wear but anyway the wall man happy to have this so boom so some of the sometimes you're in a thrift store and I was getting so excited that I never find anything that I started just grabbing stuff and so I probably would have left this one behind. It's a single, it's a 12 inch single. This is Dead or Alive's My Heart Goes Bang. And the, the ridiculous thing is I actually have the Dead or Alive singles album that has all the remixes on it already, the 12 inch remixes on it. So whatever, I was excited. I snagged it. I don't hate Dead or Alive. I'll take it. And then Bananarama. How can you pass up I Heard a Rumor? Three different versions. So I haven't played this yet, but that's a cool tune, man. I'll take it. Um, very clean. Is this even worth $3? I don't know, man. I was just grabbing everything that looked like anything. If you watch my channel, you know I love Steve Winwood. This might be one of his best solo um, albums. And uh, Arc of a Diver, Steve Winwood. Nice and clean. And then we got Lee Retinor, I guess you pronounce it. Uh, this album's called Ret. I actually kind of like this album. Um, this has Mr. Briefcase on it. I don't know, do you guys know about Lee Retinor? Do you like Lee Retinor? Um, this is the only thing I've heard by him, but it's cool, you know? I mean, there, there's a time and a place, so yeah, I'm glad they had this. And then I got two Who albums, and neither one of them is regular issue albums in the sense that they're not regular issue studio albums, but here is The Kids Are All Right by The Who. Love that cover. Double LP with the inserts and everything. Um, have not heard this, to be honest with you. So it is from a soundtrack. So uh, I like soundtracks. We'll see. I'm going to check this out. There it is, The Who. And then lastly, there's this album. And this is a compilation of outtakes. Haven't heard this one either. But again, a, a cool cover on this one. There's the inner sleeve. So yeah, super cool, man. A couple Who albums even. So am I making too big of a deal out of this? I mean, again, I do not have luck at thrift stores. Granted, I stopped going for the most part, but that's because every time I would go in, I would never find anything. And so why even try? But now I'm sort of like, I have to stop every time I go buy one because there is still stuff in thrift stores. I ended up coming away with 34 albums for around a hundred bucks. I mean, I'll take it. Even just that Garcia album that I showed in the beginning is just about worth the price of admission. So I am very happy with my stop. So, but you tell me, are you a regular thrift store shopper? Do you find vinyl there that you can add to your collection? Do you avoid thrift stores? Do you loathe the thrift stores. There's no way you would ever consider buying a thrift store album and putting it in the collection. Or are you like me where you just feel like there's just no value in going anymore? Maybe at one time there was value in going and coming away with some albums, but just not anymore. And does this video re-inspire you to pop in from time to time and check out the albums and just see what they have because you just never know. If you like this video, I hope you'll consider subscribing. I really appreciate it. Please like it, leave a comment. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.